everybody. I'm back again with the thoughts on E3. Uh, I did the Microsoft press conference yesterday and wanted to do another one for PlayStation. Do another one for Nintendo next time, so look out for that one too. Uh, let's just dive right into it. I don't want to get too rambly. The Last Guardian was up first for their press conference. Uh, my first thought, this game still exists. I mean, it's been in development hell since 2007. It was originally planned for the PS3, a puzzle platformer, you take control of a boy, uh, assisting a giant dog bird thing. Uh, it's an attempt to guide throughout the challenges of the game. It's the same team who did Shadows of the Colossus and Ico. I like the company. I like what they did with Shadows of the Colossus. I'm not sure how I'm going to feel about um, The Last Guardian because it's been in development hell for so long. I don't know. Man. There was some gameplay. It looked pretty cool, but... Eh? It was the same gameplay trailer they showed a few years ago, the other E3. Whatever. Anyway, let's move on to Horizon. Third-person stealth action game. Uh, it's in a post-apocalyptic world where you play a... Uh, mech in a kind of a cave woman in a mechanized world. So, essentially, you play as this woman who is part of a... I wouldn't say cave woman. Tribal woman. Who... Um, is descended from the previous people who lived on the planet, us. Uh, essentially, you go out and hunt, uh, try to bring back food, stuff like that, but you are harassed by mechanized things that have taken over the planet. Why they're there, I don't know. They didn't really elaborate. In fact, I imagine you'll have to go and find that out as you're playing through the game. Uh, it honestly... The main character had a running... It looked pretty. It really did. Honestly, I kind of got bored as soon as I saw the, tr the gameplay. It looked like a lot of stealthier, like a stealthier version of games like Uncharted or Tomb Raider. No, there wasn't really a cover mechanic, so kind of had to hide in the bushes, but... So bored. I, j I, I, I paid attention as much as I could, but it just kind of, I had my attention drifting. It's not, it's not something I want to play. Uh, main character did, the, the one thing that caught my attention was that the main character kind of had a running commentary throughout the entire trailer. So basically kind of handheld you, showed you how to play the game, that kind of thing. Like, she's in the middle of uh, panting breath and said, I've got to do this, uh, or I've got to do this to take it down, that kind of thing. It was kind of neat, I liked it. Uh, but the problem with it that I saw was it kind of looked like a mechanized version of Monster Hunter. Uh, in this state, it doesn't seem like it has co-op gameplay, so it takes away all the fun of Monster Hunter. Either way, um, next up was Square Enix's portion, and they had the Hitman trailer. Uh, there was no gameplay, but the, 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 the visual trailer itself looked pretty sweet. And it, it was really nice to see Agent 47 back in action. I like that. Uh, next up was Street Fighter V. Um, exclusivity. Uh, if you own a PC, you'll be able to play it. If not, you'll have to have a PS4. That's it. I cannot stand exclusivity. It's hard to screw up a Street Fighter game. They, it basically is the next evolution. They showed Cammy and one other character that I didn't know because I didn't really follow Street Fighter for a while. Um, fighting games aren't really my thing, but I still hate exclusivity. I might post another rant on that later on, but the point is, I don't like it. I think it stifles creativity. Next up was No Man's Sky. Wow. It was absolutely breathtaking. The designer and the presenter was showing off No Man's Sky, and I thought it looked absolutely gorgeous. So essentially, it is an entire universe. He pulled out... A, of the camera view while well, he showed off you know some of the space combat and then he sort of slowly pulled the camera back out so you could see the map it was an entire solar system he pulled back further it was an entire galaxy he pulled back further and further and further and kept going more and more and more and he made a point of saying that each one of those you know dots on the screen those dots of light those points of light suns each one of those was a solar itself it looked so cool my I really want to play it. I don't think I'll end up picking a PS4 for it, but I kind of, I still kind of want to play it. I didn't see whether or not it was exclusive. I really wasn't paying attention to that much to it, to that portion of it anyway. Um, essentially, you have the entire universe at your fingertips. You've 
can upgrade your ship, fly around, uh, space combat, explore planets, which everything happens in a first-person perspective, so even when you land on a planet, you're in first-person shooter mode. Uh, kind of ho-hum in that portion of it, but it was pretty cool to see the, these guardians come out and start attacking you, start harming the planet. Um... My only problem with an entire universe at your fingertips, unless you are going in with someone that you know and you want to meet somewhere, you're probably not going to run into too many people if you have an entire universe. So many people. Game. That's my big problem with it. Uh, but it's it's again, I, I haven't seen much else from it, so it's hardly a big deal. Next up was a game from Media Molecule, the folks who uh, made. Um, Little Big Planet called Dreams. They wanted to capture the idea of lucid dream. Essentially, um, they made an art tool that you can play. So, what was really weird is that, forgive me for using a prop, but they had the controller and you were essentially drawing with it. So, it was kind of motion controlled with the controller in your hand as you're drawing around. Obviously, it's a PS4 controller, not a Super Nintendo, but you get the point. I'm not sure how I feel about it. It, it made it seem kind of clunky as you're drawing away. With a PlayStation Move, I could see it, but with the PS4 controller, as you're farting around like that, it, it seemed kind of uh, imprecise. So maybe as more and more detail comes out, there'll be different improvements, but as it is, it's not something I'm really super huge looking forward to. Uh, then again, I don't have a console, so what's the difference? Next up was Firewatch. Uh, debuts on the PS4, so there is an exclusivity, but it's still annoying that, hey, we have it first, neener, neener, but not the point. Cool design. Uh, I, I liked the way it looked. It looked like uh, the art style kind of brought to mind Borderlands. It had the same cell shaded type thing. Uh, once again, no gameplay. That's, of course, a common theme with E3. They just show off tightly controlled trailers of video. Here, unless it's in a very, very complete close to end beta state, or even almost a finished game that they're going to release soon. Uh, after that was Destiny. Uh, they debuted the next chapter in Destiny's, Destiny's uh, story called The Taken King. Apparently you killed his son and he's out for revenge. It looked pretty cool. No real big gameplay, just a lot of explosions and exposition. After that was the trailer for Assassin's Creed Syndicate. Uh, I'm going to be honest with you, of still suffering from franchise fatigue with Assassin's Creed. Like I mentioned in the last video, um, Assassin's Creed uh, Assassin's Creed uh, 3 came out, and before they even finished before they even released it, it was on like two weeks before the release where they were really piping it, they started showing Assassin's Creed 4 promos. Which, don't get me wrong, Assassin's Creed 4 is a pretty good game. I got it on my 360 and I've been playing that, but Really, once it came up into a yearly franchise, I'm scared. I'm curious about this one, though. I'm genuinely curious about it, if only for a few things. One, this is the first big-budget Assassin's Creed title where you play as a lady. I know you played as a woman in previous titles, but it's the first one where I've seen you actually play as a, in a big-budget you know, console title, not just a handheld or portable title. Uh, two... The new tools look neat. There's a cane sword, throwing knives to make their inevitable resurgence, and the woman you play as looks really freaking cool. For the life of me, I can't remember. Uh, number three, it's not mentioned, but you, there's a brother-sister thing. Like The brother is narrating it while the woman's, his sister's kicking the crap out of everything that moves. Really cool. Thumbs up to Ubisoft for this one. I never thought I'd say that. Never thought those words would come out of my mouth, but that was a really cool trailer. Uh, but number three is co-op. Uh, it's not mentioned in the trailer, but I think they, they, they'll mention it sometime. I'm hoping that you can play a co-op campaign. I'm not too... I'm not too optimistic on it, but I'm hopeful. This next one coming up... I don't know how I feel about it. It's another Square Enix title. It's World of Final Fantasy. There wasn't any gameplay, but it... Look up the trailer. I'll, I'll link it in the... In, I don't want to even look it up. It looks like chibi characters. It, it debuts for PS4 and PlayStation Vita. It just turned me off. Just the, the presenter called it adorable, but I was almost immediately turned off by the, the visual style. That's just me. I mean, some folks might like it. Some folks won't. 
I don't know. You'll see. Um, next up after this was what everybody was salivating and chomping at the door. It's been hugely demanded ever since it came out, ever since the PS3 came out, and then subsequently the PS4 is now out. A Final Fantasy VII remake. It's gorgeous. The, game, the, the trailer showed no gameplay, but it showed... Uh, it had a very gruff-speaking gentleman talking about uh, all kinds of his... And then at the end, they show Cloud and the Buster Sword on his back, show Cloud from behind, Buster Sword on his back, and I just... I had a fanboy moment. However, I've seen images floating around on the internet with the Buster Sword cutting a, an Xbox One in half. People seem to be ignoring the wording that they used. Play it first on PS4. Everyone is saying this is the Xbox killer. Take deep breath, step back. You're overlooking this. It's just coming first to PS4. Not exclusive. Please relax. That said, next up was a little um, showcase of Devolver Digital's new titles coming up. Uh, Ronin. Eitr, E-I-T-R, I don't know how to pronounce it. Mother Russia, um, Mother Russia is Bleeding and Crossing Souls. So Ronin looked like it was a side-scroller stealth game. Uh, basically, you play a ninja that kills everything and that moves. Um, after that was Eitr, which kind of looked like an isometric RPG in the similar style of Diablo 3, Diablo 2, that kind of thing. Um, Next up after that was Russia, Mother Russia Bleeds, which was a beat 'em up in the style of the old Dragon, the Double Dragon games. It had a lot more violence and destruction. However, you are beating the crap out of everything. Blood's everywhere. It's really, really cool. Uh, Crossing Souls. I'm, I'm not sure. I'm not sure how to really say what this is. It kind of looked like a side scroller. I don't know. It, it, it looked really weird. I'm kind of curious about it, but uh, until it debuts, I'm, I don't know much more. After that was another long-awaited title. Shenmue 3. Uh, Mr. Suzuki, I think... Yes, Yu Suzuki. He presented the long-awaited third installment of Shenmue 3. As of this moment, I'm looking at the Kickstarter campaign right now, it's at $2.736 million. They were only asking for... That was in the first day since it debuted on PS4, or the, in the PS4 conference. It is, once again, exclusive to PS4 and, and PC. I, I, I like that they actually are including PC in this, but I'm pissed that it's once again exclusive. I get it, Shenmue is on Dreamcast, and once Dreamcast died, it was PlayStation, but holy crap, leave me alone with this exclusivity crap. Stop, 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 stop. It kills creativity. I'm going to save all of that for later. I, I'm, I'm looking forward to it. I'm looking forward to seeing it. I've never played any of the Shenmue games. Anyway, after that was Batman Arkham Knight. This is how it happened. That was a really cool line that came out from the trailer. Uh, the first scene in the trailer shows the Joker cremating, being cremated, and it's nine months afterwards. The narrator mentions uh, you you sh you play the first level as the narrator, who is a beat cop named Officer Owen, who in the first few minutes of the trailer show faces off against the Scarecrow. Scarecrow is sitting there smoking a cigar, much like I am now, and he blows his um, uh, aerosolized. Uh, Fear toxin into Officer Owen's face, and a lot of cool stuff happens after that. You're basically facing off against all the patrons in the bar, a bunch of other bar diner that you walk, that Officer Owen walked into. Um, a really cool opening trailer. I liked it. You pull out your gun, start firing away in first person mode. It looks pretty sweet. I'm looking forward to playing that one. It's um, there's some exclusive stuff uh, that came to PS4. I didn't pay attention to it but it's going to be debut for all the consoles. Uh, after that was PS4's Virtual Reality Tech Demo, Project Morpheus. Bunch of games that they debuted, Godling, The Deep. Uh, the Deep is a kind of a, a shark attack type thing. That's just what they showed, like a hammerhead shark coming up. To after that was Riggs, a mechanized combat league, kind of an FPS thing, Reverse 3 Battle Arena. 
World War Tunes, Wayward Sky. These are just a few games that they mentioned that were going to come out directly for Project Morpheus. Next up was the announcement of some other technologies that weren't gaming related, but were still PlayStation related. Uh, specifically, Spotify made a partnership with PlayStation Music uh, for just a really cool customized uh, PlayStation 4 app. I liked it. It looked pretty sweet. I'm not a huge on, I'm not a big music guy myself, unless music, but I really liked what they did with it. Uh, PlayStation View, which is a complete TV experience designed for the gamer, whatever the fuck that means. Uh, it's launched in farm markets already, specifically, I think it was Chicago, San Francisco, cities. Um, they did a full comprehensive thing on it. I liked what I heard, but I'm not really huge on TV. If I'm gonna watch. I'm gonna watch it on that. After that was Call of Duty, Black Ops Three. There's a lot of franchise fatigue. There's two different franchises: Black Ops and Call of Duty Classic. I don't care. There were lots of changes, but honestly, it was a little bit of gameplay, nothing. Um. Apparently the years 20 Joy of Joys, we're in the future. The opening cinematic, it looks just like the last Call of Duty, the future, whatever the hell it was. Uh, the one with Kevin Spacey. I just really don't care. I got the biggest franchise for TV. The biggest addition was that it seemed to be full story co-op. That's a really great idea. Can we do it on something that isn't Call of Duty or Battlefield? Treyarch Beta Access first came to PS4. That was the big thing and why Treyarch was in PlayStation. <clears throat> they had a really long trailer after that for uh, the next titles coming to PlayStation. They showed glimpses of the new Metal Gear, the new Deus Ex, the new Uncharted, the Nathan Drake collection, which I assume is going to be Uncharted 1 3 on PS4. More HD remakes. Um, more from Destiny. Uh, more Batman. New. Uh, new um, Major League Baseball, the show games, uh, Lego games, Assassin's Creed, and more footage of the games that they'd already previously shown. They had extended a little bit of like maybe 20 seconds of the Until Dawn extended portion. It looked like kind of a survival horror game with a very much like a Saw feel, the, the movie franchise. Um, basically, it looked like there was a woman in a towel who had just gotten kidnapped. It looked like pretty, something pretty sweet. I might be wanting to try it. Uh, after that, there was barely anything of the Vita shown at all in this entire thing. There's a couple of games that are coming out for it, that, but are also coming to PS4. I'm kind of pissed because I really want more for the Vita. I love my Vita. I like that I can play old PlayStation titles, take it with me, and then I can port the saves over to my PS3 and play them there. It's really cool. Um, Ratchet and Clank was mentioned too on here. Uh, after that was the Disney Infinity box set. Um, Infinity is kind of the Disney uh, play sets, like you're playing with action figures, but they're coming to life. It was, it was kind of neat. They showed Star Wars, Twilight Republic, and Rise Against the Empire. Those two sets are coming to Disney Infinity 3. Uh, you just get access to them first on PlayStation, I think. I don't remember if he said it was... After that was Star Wars Battlefront. I'd been waiting for this. I really wanted to see the trailer for this. It looked awesome. Showed a lot of gameplay. Admiral Akbar is the guy giving you missions, and it was freaking sweet. Unfortunately, he doesn't say it's a trap or anything like that. But still, I was really, it was really cool. Um, it looks and feels like a Star Wars game. You can switch between first and third person. I, I, I can't wait. I honestly cannot wait to play it. Um, it that's just it. I mean, I, I'm looking forward to it. The last uh, portion was the closeout ceremony, which he gave a few minutes, and he's like, this is the last thing we're going to show. And it was Uncharted 4 Thief's End. Lots of gameplay footage. It looks like an Uncharted game shit on PS4. Uh, it's pretty great. I mean, I'm not so sure how much I'm looking forward to it, mostly because of that hell beast of exclusivity once again rearing its ugly head. But that's neither here nor there. That wraps it up for PS4's conference. All in all, they had a really strong showing. I liked what I saw, but again, I'm really not huge on exclusivity. I don't like it. I don't. Um, sorry about the buzzing. That was my phone. I forgot to put. It. Long story short, I like what I saw from PS4. Uh, they had a really strong showing. I want to see more, but I don't want to spend the umpteen dollars to buy yet another console. Just I just don't. I'll get it someday, but 
long story short, good showing for PS4, good showing from Xbox. I'm going to do another one for Nintendo. I'll watch the press conference tomorrow. That's about it. You guys have a good day.